Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast, where we go to North Texas and my friend Brett McCaslin, his mean green are seven and two. They are one of the top defensive entities in the country, again, for 2SA, as three teams were lost, and now we're down to 11, right, Coach? Yeah, no, uh, it definitely makes for a fun schedule having a, a round robin, a true round robin where you play everybody twice. You get that uh, traditional home and away uh, games, which I think always is is fun for conference play. Coach, obviously, like we say, you guys are known as a defensive entity, and right now you're number one in the country and allowing only 43.8 field goal attempts third in the country and 51.1 points per game. Does anything change in being such a good defensive team? Well, our philosophy, um, as of three years ago, we made a shift. Uh, the first year we won the league championship, we decided we would go to a no middle defense, uh, which has more interchangeable parts. You're allowed to switch more. We really tried to initially play more of a pack line, um, keep matchups the way we wanted them to defensively. But then since we made that change, we've really elevated our ability to be switchable, to rotate, to keep people out of the middle. And I think it's made a, a big impact. You know, Coach Hodge, Ross Hodge, our associate head coach, is one of the greatest coaches in the country, offense, defense, no matter what you're talking about. But he's kind of been the the real – you know, foundation behind all these changes and what we're doing as as a scheme. You know, we 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 all kind of coach what we're trying to do to win games, and we've tried to make our offense and our defense complement each other, so it gives us the best chance to win. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely been an emphasis, and it's allowed us to to I think dictate tempo defensively also you know because your best defense sometimes is a good offense too right you don't give mm -hmm. up uh transition baskets by turning the ball over uh we were just talking about that in practice today honestly like don't give up those big big live ball turnovers that lead to baskets so really trying to scheme things on both ends but our defense and the changes we've made three years ago are a real big reason why we've won championships here now, do your players embrace the pride that they have acquired or the pride that they take in that? Do they talk about it? Yeah, no question. I mean, we, we start in the summer with it. So when you show up on campus and, you know, we got one of those plaques that came in the mail this last year because we had the number one scoring defense in the country last year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just I think our team identifies with it because when the moment we get on campus, those are some of the things that we work on. We work on our positioning. We work on our competitiveness in that area. And uh, it's hard not to when it's out, when you practice it as much as we do. Sure. Now, you're, you're also one of the top de uh, rebounding teams in the country. You allow 28 per game, which is third in the nation, and only 6.5 offensive rebounds, which you don't give the opponent much of another chance off the shot. And that's, that's a strong thing to have happen, you know, if you follow and watch basketball. Yeah, ultimately, we, we feel like that the defense and the rebounding are – you know, some physical yeah. components to the game. And we like to say that the toughest team wins and we just believe it, honestly. And we try to get that competitiveness where our guys understand the value of every possession. We try to create more possessions by offensive rebounding and then we try to limit it defensive rebounding. And when you go back and look at it statistically, our guards do a great job rebounding. And, you know, rebounding uh, starts – with your ability to to have everybody involved in it. I mean, like, no, nobody's nobody's out of the rebounding wars with us. Sure. Like everybody's involved in it. Like I, and we put a big emphasis on doing it as a team. And you know, we don't leak out. We don't try to get out early. We really try to make sure we secure the basketball. Yeah, your team uh, won a record, a North Texas record, 25 games last season. And you had the best overall conference record, even though there were two divisions. You were 16-2. and two. 
how do those two accomplishments move forward and motivate the team for this season? Well, I think one, there's an expectation and that's yeah. what we love about it. Right. And the guys that return understand that expectation and the guys that come here want the expectation of having an opportunity to win championships. And that, that really means a lot. It means a lot to how you practice. It means a lot to how you prepare. It means a lot to how you coach. And I think it just helps. I think it helps that winning is the priority. I mean, I think these days it's difficult because everybody has individual goals, but if those individual goals supersede what the team goals are, then you're not going to have success. And I, that's one thing I think our group understands and our programs about is about how do you love each other? Well, how do you pour your heart into something that's bigger than yourself? Um, and when you come here and you're a part of North Texas basketball, you understand that the ultimate goal is to win championships. And that's why you want to come here to, to sure. win a championship ring to, and, and then when that's the heart, then I think those guys look at it and the guys that are even on our team want guys that have that same heart, right? Mm -hmm. We just, we don't really want guys that are individuals that care about what they're going to get out of it. It's just about what we can give. And there's a balance to it, as you know, right? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you find that balance. I, you know, we had the intent of playing faster this year. We just had such a difficult start to the season. The expectation's still there, but like for the example, the St. Mary's game, which we had eight guys test positive for the flu within 48 hours leaving for that trip. And Reuben Jones hadn't come back from an off-season knee surgery. And Tyler Perry um, had a little uh, – one of his knees he had a little complication with, so he didn't play in the game. So your two starting point guards, your first-team all-conference guards were out, and then we didn't practice for five days prior to leaving for that trip. We actually literally met our team at the airport. So, you know, we, we – you know, looking at that, we couldn't really do the things that we'd worked on all off season. And that's one of your first opportunities to play in a game on the road. And we just didn't have anything to us. I mean, like literally I wouldn't have played that game other than we were contractually bound to play it because it just <laughs> didn't give us a chance. So I do think we've got a, a one of the better offensive teams we've had. And mm -hmm. I love, I love our team. I love our depth. I love our versatility. I love our, our, depth at the forward spot and the guard spot. And I think once we get all the pieces together, this can turn out to be uh, possibly the best offensive team we've had since we've been here. Now, you mentioned Tyler Perry is your leading scorer at 16.9 points per game. The thing that impresses me is he's made 3.1 three-point shots per game. He had 35 points against San Jose State. So how has he become such a factor on offense? Well, you know, last year was our leading score, is our returning yeah. leading score, and he has such a good feel and pace for the game, and he's an elite shooter, and that's anytime you can shoot the ball that well, but what he's underrated at is getting fouled. He can really mm -hmm. manipulate ball screens. He turns them down well. So he's difficult to guard because he can shoot, first of all, and it really attracts a lot of attention to him, but he understands how to how to play in ball screen situations and how to get fouled. And he shoots 80% from the free throw line. So he, when you can get fouled and you can make threes, that's a lethal combination. And he understands the game. He's unbelievably unselfish. When we first got him, got here, it's funny. There's guys on our roster. J.J. Murray was a, a an all-defensive player for us. And I think probably – Adrian Van Buren, we call him Scooby, he used to play uh, when I coached him at Midland Junior College and then at uh, at Midwestern State. He had coached him for five years, and I coached J.J. for four. And those two guys are the best defenders I've ever coached. And J.J. is an elite on-ball defender. And he didn't think Tyler was very good when he first got here because Tyler is an unselfish guy by nature. He passed the ball well. And he really cares about his teammates. He loves to play and flow and rhythm. And then in big games, though, he understands how to go get 
shots and how to make big shots. And last year he made a lot of big shots for us. So I think his understanding of our offense coming into the season and his ability to understand how we want to play, that's why he's been so productive so far this season. And when he's played, he wasn't healthy the other day when we played at home against Omaha. And if he doesn't have that, you know, he's averaging 20 a game. He only had two in that game. But, you know, he's one of those guys that just has a great feel for our offense and is a fantastic teammate. Coach, with his, uh, you know, feel for your offense, how have you seen opposing defenses react? Yeah, well, they've, they've started to double team him quite a bit, you know, try to go get the ball out of his hands. So when we saw that uh, when we played Long Beach, they tried to go get the ball out of his hands. And that's where, you know, when Ruben Jones is healthy and we get him going full speed, we've had him on minutes restrictions. He's only played like 15 to 20 minutes a game. And last year he played 33 minutes a game for us. So when we get him full strength, Kai Huntsbury has made huge strides for us, Tyree Eady has been fantastic. His minutes continue to be solid. He's understanding. He's shooting the ball better. And then Matthew Stone, I think we just have better guard depth than we've had. And especially guys that can make plays off the bounce. I mean, Kai Huntsbury is a real problem. He played one of his best games, floor games the other day when uh, we played Omaha and and uh, Tyler was a little under the weather, and he really produced. So I think from a multiple ball handler standpoint, this is the best group we've had here. And that just, I think, really can take some of the double-team pressure off of Tyler where he can just keep distributing and making the simple play and giving other guys opportunities to make those decisions so it's not all on his shoulders. Huntsbury uh, has really good inside outside ability. He can change defenses. So, in doing that, uh, how does that help you on offense and help the team in general? Yeah, ultimately, you and I both know that when great guards, you know, are, are in college basketball are imperative. But like when we've had success, it's been when a boost played great. Yeah. Uh, Abu Uzman. And that's the thing that I think Kai Huntsbury has done well is he's passed the ball to Abu in these ball screens and got him some open shots and his size and physicality. He can get closer to the rim. He's, I mean, he's, he's, he's got great uh, drive spacing awareness and he can create advantages with his frame that he loves contact. And when you have a guard that seeks out contact on drives, it really can give you an opportunity to get to spots, to deliver the ball to forwards, especially on, on rolls and ball screens. And that's where he's changed the element because we haven't had Ruben Jones and Ruben's good at doing that, but without Ruben out there, you know, Kai's really picked up the slack in that regard. So, you know, getting our forwards around the rim has really been a, a kind of the one-two punch that's given us the best chance. And last year, uh, when we had our best, you know, games, we got the ball uh, to multiple forwards around the rim. And then they had to, you know, our foul rate was best in our league last year. And uh, at free throw rate was last year was best in our league. And Thomas Bell was a big part of that. Well, this year, you know, Abu's kind of taking that slack and then Jaden Martinez, but Kai's ability to get in there and get fouled has been beneficial and helped us get paint touches. Yeah. Now Kai and Abu are your other two double digit scorers along with Tyler, just so the fans and people listening know. Aaron Scott's been good for you as well. He gets to the free throw line more this season so far. Uh, and he's kept his shooting percentage up around 51%. Yeah, Aaron's really worked on it. He's never been like an offensive score first mentality. He's been a rebounder. He's a ball mover. And we're just trying to convince him that he has – you know, our confidence to go out there and score, and, but he's just such a, a willing passer and he's, he's more in the mindset of being a ball mover, but the more we get him aggressive, I thought in our, in our last couple of games, we've seen him finish around the rim with, with, a, with authority, which really I think will change the complexion of our team. The more he gets involved in our offense. And that's what I love about this team. They're honestly, it's a, it's an unselfish group. And when I look yeah. at them, 
they 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 want to pass the ball as much as they want to score the ball and that's kind of been uh, you know a blessing because guys are so willing to move it but as you know putting pressure on the rim and the paint is how you how you get defenses on their heels and the more we get guys confident and the more experience they get obviously the better the better we've gotten and every year we've been in the top three in our league uh in offense you know mm-hmm. and and since we've been here except for that season we won lost seven of our last eight when those guys got hurt which was our second year but we've had a top three offense every year, whether it's efficiency or effective field goal percentage. And and I, I think this season's no different in regards to our ability to keep improving as the year goes on. Yeah, and, you know, one of your fortes is points off turnovers. There was one point I saw a statistic where you were forcing a turnover in 23.5% of your time on defense. I think maybe that was uh, a group of notes I saw maybe a week ago. Uh, so take us inside. How do you how do you game plan for those situations, for those types of offenses where your defense can take command like that? Yeah, well, I think ultimately it's how do you disrupt the flow of what people want to do? Mm-hmm. And, and that's – that's where we've had success with our side defense. It's like when the ball gets on the side, how do you make it where people can't run the things that they want to run? Like how, And it's not always just denying the basketball. It, it, a lot of ours is more about forcing the ball handler to dribble to locations that teams normally don't want to. And in our defense, it's to the baseline. And mm-hmm. we're early to rotate and we're comfortable in rotations. And the more you can put pressure on teams by making them dribble, where they don't want to dribble and being able to rotate and anticipate those rotations. When we first got here, we didn't want to rotate. I mean, like, you know, I think we know this, like good defenses have an identity and our identity was more about let's stay out of rotations. Let's not try to put two on the ball. Let's do a good job of keeping the ball in front. Let's make sure we got a good plan to keep the matchups defensively that we want to teach where that we want to keep. Now we, we invite the rotations. We like the switches. We like the disruption. We're comfortable with rotations. We teach the rotations and when you can anticipate where the rotates rotations come from, then that's how you can put, make people uncomfortable and you can turn them over. So really our defense puts people in a position where they have to do things that they normally wouldn't do. And then they have to go away from what they're comfortable with their offense that they love and, and have to kind of play the way we want to, which then we're comfortable in our rotation. So, uh, you know, the disruptive nature of our defense really is starts with, with, with guarding the ball and making people dribble where we want them to dribble as opposed to letting the ball get in reverse and get to the paint from the middle of the floor. You know, you get that in the NBA a lot too. Uh, you know, I've heard NBA coaches like at clinics and things talk about those scenarios and situations. Um, so, I, you know, I, a lot of times I think the NBA doesn't get a lot of credit for doing those types of things, actually. Yeah, especially when you're talking about the clock, you know, the 24-second clock and and how quickly you can try to keep that ball from moving. And the best teams that, as you and I both know, they have a feel and an understanding. They can pass the ball. They can move the ball. Multiple guys can make decisions. And I think that's the same way with the NBA. When you see teams that have the ability to get the ball and – multiple people's hands and they still make the right read and they make great decisions. And, and that's where, you know, we feel like our defense has an advantage. The more people that have to touch it in areas that they don't want to, you know, the better off we're going to be. And um, when we've seen these changes that we've made at their best is when people are putting their head down and dribbling in areas that we want them to. And that, that part has And then in the end, ultimately, you got to you still got to have great ability to guard the ball in one on one situations. That's what it kind of boils down to for us. And how physical can we be without fouling in the middle of the floor? And that's where I think the NBA, as you know, is good. I mean, get that ball in the middle of the floor and they can manipulate you. So ultimately, it comes down to that middle ball screen and how efficient can you be at defending the middle of the floor? 
Coach, last thing here, uh, Conference USA, they, they lose Old Dominion Marshall and Southern Miss, which it takes away the divisional format. I was curious how that affects you and then how will that affect conference play in general? Well, the obvious part being that you play a true home and away. I just like that you have a true conference champion. You know, I think sure. when you had as many teams as we had with 14, like there were so many teams, like divisions made more sense because I think like it's just a huge league and, and you want you, and you, I think there's, it's big enough to where two champions having an East or West felt like it matched the number. Well, now with 11, having one true champion feels more like, yeah, you know, I was in the big 12 for a long time and we had very similar numbers where you have that true home and away with 10 teams and you're playing, you know, 18 league games. I mean, I like that. I like the 20 league games. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we look forward to having a true champion. And then the other part that's unique, I, I do feel like with the teams that are in it and you look at the success that teams are having this year, like FAU and mm -hmm. Dusty's doing a phenomenal job with his yep. team, it's the best team he's had since he's been there. They're a top 75 team in the country right now with some great wins and obviously UAB, you know, Western Kentucky middle, but then you got La Tech who's had a lot of success. Charlotte has a, had a great start to the season. UTEP's been the team that beat us last year at the end of the season. Rice is always a difficult match. We've had a hard time at FIU and UTSA has been some of our road losses. So mm -hmm. just, I think the basketball, we lost some great basketball teams. You know, Old Dominion, Mar we did lose some great basketball teams, but it feels like the depth of the remaining teams right now has made our conference actually stronger. And when you look at the numbers, I think it actually, we're ranked like 11th right now as the 11th toughest league. So with that 11-10 number, man, yeah. I mean, that's, makes, that's a quality league. So it, it really, I think, makes it more competitive because you're playing everybody twice and the number of teams that are left, I think the basketball is as good as it's been since I've been in it. Coach Grant McCastle of the North Texas Mean Green. Glad to have you back on the show talking about strategy. It's something I love. Coach, it's a pleasure seeing you, talking to you. I wish you the best. Thanks for having me on, man. Always love it. Go Mean Green. Okay. It's good. The Mean Green. Yes, sir.